Hey guys, what's up? It's Kinsey, and today I am here with. Hi guys, this is Brooke. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> okay, we're like really in the mood. We recorded possibly the funniest IGTV videos for the podcast Instagram that you guys should follow. It'll be linked down below. Anyways, I wanted to film our podcast recording for YouTube since you guys really like the last one. So. Without further ado, we're going to get into it. Subscribe if you guys are new here. We both have podcasts, Gals on the Go, and I love you so much. I'll have them both linked down below. You guys can listen to this episode or more on the I Love You So Much podcast, and then there's more on Gals on the Go. Hey, Brooke. Hi. Oh, my gosh. I am so unbelievably excited for this podcast episode. I texted her yesterday. I'm so excited, and she was like, I'm scared. <laughs> because we didn't really talk about, like, the specifics of what we're talking about, so. Uh, yeah, but I think, Brooke, I've said this every se- everywhere that i think brooke is genuinely the funniest person to walk this earth I, there's no one funnier than you you don't oh gosh, understand stop. i almost feel bad for you because like you don't get the experience of being around you because you just are you you know what i mean okay, well thank you <laughs> kind words thank you but then i feel like if you overhype it then everyone's gonna be like this girl so you know what i mean no. you gotta like serve it like media and be like she's funny not like she's okay. the funniest person because then it's <laughs> okay in like a social setting i'll start with the like okay yeah she's kind of funny but like here okay you know, okay okay I'll, fair I'll Accepted. I know you mean okay. it's a compliment, but you know yeah. when you overhype something so much, like, <laughs> it's gonna be the best ever, and it's yeah. like so average. <laughs> yeah, so average. Are we gonna be at Coachella for your birthday this year? No, that will be. Yeah, I know. Just what are the dates? Are we? Uh, when are we at Coachella? The weekend before. I think it's the like ninth. Oh, dang it! I think we know that. It's really cute. You guys can't see this unless you're watching the YouTube video recording, <laughs> which there is one. Link in the show notes. It's really hard being on almost like every single platform at this point and <laughs> saying like, what that. Description, show <laughs> like, what is it? I don't know. Bio, whatever. Um, because I'm currently wearing a don't text hoodie. So an icon, an icon, <laughs> and we're wearing our matching friendship bracelets, panda camera, um, <laughs> that we got last month in New York for our friendship. It was like for Christmas, kind of. Yeah. Friendship mostly. <laughs> friendship mostly. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to have you on. I decided that I would like to intro you as the Brooke that I knew at 15. <gasps> Brooke Ooh, X Beauty. <laughs> Make it stop. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we have okay, actually okay. known each other. I was 15. Were you, like, yeah, so 16? 16? Yeah. 16. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. We're, We're 22 now. Almost 23. You're almost 23. I know. That's a scary. I mean, it's not really that scary. Like, I still feel like under 25. I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm so young in the scheme of life. But 22 is, so I would wanna, I want to be 22 forever. That's yeah. a good age. It is a good age. Do you feel like, I remember being 15 and thinking 22 was so yep. old. And now I don't even think 30 is old. Yeah. It's kind of encouraging. Oh, every year you know? it gets a little bit higher and higher. Because yeah. I, I feel like you look at people that are, like, graduating college or, like, that last year of college. And you're like, wow, like, big kids. And then now you're like... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, I, I graduate this year, God willing. Um, just kidding. I'm going to graduate. But I graduate in, uh, not even this year, like in a few months. Yeah. And I just feel like I've been in school for my entire life. So the fact that I'm actually going to be done and like, I'm actually going to have my bachelor's. It hasn't really crossed my mind because I've just been in school for so long. Like the fact, like getting it, I, you know what it, I mean? It doesn't cross it. Like, so I graduated this past may oh my gosh almost a year ago now wow but it doesn't hit like yeah i feel that way too that because you just do school and from what preschool onward if you go to college yeah so you don't really know any different and then it's weird you're like wow i don't have to like report anywhere like hand yeah. in these things i don't have to write a paper meaningless blah, blah, blah. work yeah, yeah yeah so awful discussion post i don't even i don't care about the exams the thing that i'm most excited to be done with would be the discussion post yeah i get that they're so awful <laughs> okay also wanted to give an honorary mention to adina your mother i oh, love her I would love to have you both on the podcast one oh, day that'll be, that'll so be that'll might be a goal of mine i had okay. keen and her oh, mother yes. on as well yes. um that was a great episode love that yeah we love her I have so to get my mom to come to la we'll have to do that oh my gosh please oh. or i mean i'm sure i'll be in new york yeah probably let's before do then. that okay. yeah cool plan on okay it. also um just something else that i would like to say is that i would fully love to manage a comedy career <laughs> so if you ever come around okay. it's on record guys in new york we we're on our way to where were we going i think we we're, oh, we were going to dinner catch and i was like full blown 
bro, you have to be a stand-up comedian. Go on this tour. Not even, I'm like, you know, a Gals on the Go tour yeah. makes complete sense, yeah. the comedy thing. But we've now come to the conclusion that she's going to open for herself. Yeah, I'm open for the Gals on the Go tour, but just as a single comedy act. Danielle doesn't know this yet. If Danielle's listening, she's going to be like, Brooke, what the? A single comedy act. Exactly. Okay. Hot seat. First question. Favorite purchase you've made, I know this is a shocker, oh. under $100 in the past six months. Okay. I'm a big fan of the pod, so I actually did know that this was coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I feel like I have to talk about Amazon because I love Amazon. Okay. I love okay. I asked Brooke this before. Gigs up. Sometimes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sometimes I do have to ask people this question before okay, okay. because it stresses them out. Yeah. They don't want to come back on the show. And I was going to make an Amazon edition. Um to be more geared towards you because okay. you're a big Amazon gal, huge, as am I. Huge. But you're huge. You make videos. I need to do that as well. You should. Um, but, yeah, sorry. Okay, so Amazon edition. Amazon edition. Um, I brought this with me to this trip to LA. I never thought that something this, <laughs> like this would be such a large piece of me. It is my iPhone tripod. Okay. I Explain know. why. Yes. Okay, so I'm not like one of those people, like, I'm not even like a huge like Instagram girl, but this thing has, it's changed my life. Like all of a sudden I take selfies. To put it lightly. I've never, I've never done this before. Like I'm not the one to be like, oh, the lighting is good. Like selfie. Like I've literally never done this in my entire life. Except, so basically it's a tripod that it folds up, per, I'm not going to say like per size, but to like a reasonably small size. And um, on the side is a little removable Bluetooth remote. Super easy to connect to your phone. So you could be taking pictures and like, so you clip in your phone, it's super, if it's any phone size, clip in the phone, and then you could be taking pictures with this remote basically in your hand that's not shown on camera. Oh my gosh, Brooke, this entire time, I've heard you talk about this so many times, yeah. I thought you were doing it on self-timer for some reason. No, the remote is what makes it so special. Oh. Yeah. So it's good, oh it's great gosh. for like outfit Do you have it on you? Not right oh, now. Would have been great I for Chacha Macha after this. Oh. Tragic, truly. Well, I think, okay. I think I'll see you again tomorrow, so maybe I'll bring it then. Oh, yeah, please <laughs> we do. We can take pictures. Please. Yeah, it's great yeah. for groups because, you know, like, you have a friend over, and it's like, oh, we can take pictures of each other, but then you look like, do you have friends? <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know? There's only so many solo pictures you could post of yourself. Yeah. That's how I get to a point where I'm like, oh, my whole feed is just me. Like, yeah. yeah, and also, as opposed to a normal person, and by a normal person, I mean someone who doesn't expose themselves to the internet for, like, a yeah, career. Um, they don't post a lot of photos of just themselves. No. Like, but, like, it's a... You, I'm not... Whatever. I'm not going to go into it, but, like, yeah, yeah, you kind of yeah. have to, you know? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, number two. What is your go-to drink at the bar? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's um, blushing. Yeah, well, mine is a dirty martini still, and I'd get it with Tito's, because they usually ask, do you want it with gin or vodka and I say like vodka Tito's is fine that's like usually like the lowest level that they have mm -hmm. um and I get it extra dirty because if you don't ask for it extra dirty I find that it's like really strong like almost unbearably strong taste and if they have it's like a if it's a nicer like restaurant or bar they'll have blue cheese stuffed olives so I get it with blue cheese stuffed olives that's great I don't know why you're laughing at yourself. I don't know because it's just like bougie that's like a bougie drink and then if it's like a regular bar that's I, I don't really know what I'm getting I'll just get like a vodka soda lime Okay, so here's the thing. I got a martini like a month ago when I was in Texas yeah. because here I'm like, okay, Tito's vodka, yeah. definitely yeah. of choice, my choice, has been my choice yeah. forever, yeah. mostly because it's a Texas thing, but it whatever. Is. Anyways, I tried to get a dirty martini, but I didn't get an extra dirty. Uh, it was probably unbearable. Of my, exactly, of my two year, I would not say hiatus by any means, but less, le definitely a lot less drinking. Yeah as compared to oh, life yes, before yes so i'm back in the swing of things kind of i can't even really like I, now alcohol just affects me so much in the oh, sense of yeah. like my face blows up so it's really enough to just keep me away but anyways i was at dinner with my dad and he gets those and i only got a dirty martini so maybe it's because i didn't get an extra dirty but i was like oh my gosh this is so bad and keep in mind like i that's not normally an issue for me yeah you definitely have to get an extra dirty i would say yeah but I had a bad experience drinking those a few weekends ago, so now I'm like, even the sound of it, I'm like, you know, when, I don't yeah. know if you've gotten that. Even if you no, get drink soda or something, like you might get sick of it after and a while, you're like, Ew. like a favorite food or something. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll I feel like time off. I feel like martinis are the black coffee of drinks, you know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm already a black coffee drinker, so I feel like the yeah. next step would be like that's my like go-to drink of choice. And I drink a drink when uh -huh. I drink, so I think I can do it. 
you, you know, know? Yeah, i think you can i will report back okay please. and i too. am fully inspired by you and katie i think yeah. i actually posted a photo of it and tagged you and katie <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Okay. okay last but not least what, what is, is your favorite dating, dating app oh my <laughs> gosh kenzie <laughs> I only really use Hinge. I okay, but why? I, I have never okay. really done the thing because I only apparently date my friends, so please explain. So, <laughs> so. It's so much easier just doing it that way, though. The absolute <laughs> effort. <laughs> I mean, it's it's worked out for me now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like, well, all these apps are starting to like get on this thing where they do more than just photos because I personally think that there's way more to someone than just swiping through and being like this person agree more like yeah. yeah and that's just not really my situation and I nor do I care to date someone that's like only gonna date me because they found me attractive on an app so hinge has these prompts which are more they show your personality so it will say something like you know where you can find me on Sundays like laying in my bed watching Netflix or something mm-hmm. and you fill it fill in the blank here um I know Bumble is getting on this too and Tinder, I just don't, I don't even think I have it downloaded. So I primarily use Hinge. I went on Bumble the other day. I just wasn't impressed. So I Not impressed. Back to <laughs> yeah. Wow. Just really for that reason alone, because I feel like they can be like pretty superficial dating apps, which yeah, I, get I get that. it, but it's, I mean, I've learned that personality really is where it's at. So <laughs> oh, it's really where it's at. It's okay. Really we'll circle at. back to this. Okay. Um, later on in the episode okay. just dating in general okay um i just want to say people are really invested in your dating life I because know. that was oh, the only that was literally like it was that in like quitting a nine to five <laughs> <laughs> literally like that was pretty much it but what i wanted to talk about with you okay quite a few things okay. um the first thing being self-doubt oh yeah. um okay so i feel like you even if you would say that you're not a bunch of things because i have found that brooke i wish that brooke could see herself from any of her friends because oh all of us are so obsessed with you we're all like behind your back we're like brooke is my favorite person in the entire world you're literally the funniest person ever okay so also oh thank you also i think as far as character progression of all of us or whatever like you have only gone up like not that you were ever bad but that's the point like you were always great and then it's just like really gone up and you know thank you you know what i'm saying growth per- <laughs> lots of personal growth these lots of years. lots yeah. of personal growth for us all, all of us yeah um okay but i wanted to talk about like moving forward past hate oh yeah because you obviously had to make a tough decision to yeah, quit your nine to five I which i would also like to explain to people very a little backstory actually do you want to give a little backstory yourself and yeah. then i will say what i would like to sure, add on sure. okay yeah so i graduated from college in may of last year um I just did a marketing degree, went to the University of Georgia. Very normal, obviously. Everybody's doing the job hunt the like spring, even fall of your senior year. Everyone's applying to jobs, so I started doing it. And I didn't really have a specific route I wanted to go on. I was literally all over the place taking like calls with, you know, people from marketing departments, people from sales departments. Like I didn't really know. An offer kind of not landed in my lap by any means, but it just kind of worked out and it seemed like the most promising thing on the table for me, which was working for a large tech company doing sales. And I was like, you know what, it's fine for now. I would never, even going into it, like it's sad to admit, but I was never like, this is going to be it for me. Like, I'm, I'm going to be there for the rest of my life. Like, I never knew. I mean, I think though, out of college, that's pretty typical. Oh, totally. You know? Yeah. And honestly, I say it now, like it was totally a pride thing. Like not only for my parents, my family, because they could care less about like what I do. Like that, you know, they're proud of me no matter what, but more for like friends and like what society says or even what people online say everyone's like you got this degree like now you have to go get a job so whatever did the right thing got the job um moved to boston for it started working and i hate to even i I don't want to place the blame on the job at all but i think it was just doing everything was really really hard on me i have a podcast too um i have my youtube channel and i was passing up on like honestly monetarily i was passing up on opportunities that would have paid what a month of my job had paid and I mean when you just compare the numbers like face to face like that and what I had more enjoyment doing like yeah I had way more enjoyment making a video than making cold calls I mean we'll say it as it is (laughs) let's be honest here guys let's just be honest (laughs) you you can't even compare it it's something that I've and that's another thing I've been working on YouTube since I was so young I never really thought that it would be something I could do full-time just because my channel never grew enough and honestly I just got to a point where like all my platforms kind of got to a certain level where I was like wow I, I think I really could do this and I don't regret it 
I love that That's, you don't regret it. That's the decision. What was your question? No, it's not even a question. What I was going to oh, yeah, add to yeah. this is that I think the side of what people maybe don't understand, there's two things. Mm-hmm. So people have a quote unquote side hustle. Yep. And typically the goal is to make that your main career. Yeah, totally. But for some reason, whenever someone does that, especially if it is social media mm-hmm. in the realm of social media, people are very angry about it. Yep. And the whole thing of like, oh my gosh, it's not going to be there forever. It's like, okay, also I think people need to understand that people who do this i'm not going to speak for everyone but for at least all of my friends that i know who do this are like actually fully running a business and are completely capable of so many other things also i honestly think i mean it's going to be around longer than you think and then from what you're doing there you just branch out and do other things in the same kind of sense like an actor they act it's like okay where's your next show you know what i mean like you don't have that booked right then like it doesn't make sense second you kind of did touch on this but financially yep it just made a lot more sense like if you were making more money and passing up on more money than you're making Mm -hmm. doing something that you love why would you you know and i don't think it was like it's not you're right like it wasn't a dig towards your job it was just like a time thing you know yeah i mean my job definitely obviously if if it was perfect i would have stuck it out and been like you know i have to make this work or whatever but i also didn't see the career progression there for me Mm -hmm. it was i wasn't even interested in the next role like i remember telling my parents even like two weeks in i was like i I don't want this next job like yeah they were like oh well that's not good (laughs) because obviously you that's the whole point of working i feel like in corporate is that you see the goal and you're like yes like i can do it like i want to be that next level i want to be the boss or i want to be making commission i'm like i'm basically making commission myself right now though so it was very yeah it was it was interesting i yeah. will say <laughs> brooke's quitting date just kept slowly but surely moving oh, up a little bit and would, up and up and up yep if you would have asked me I, my ideal quitting date was my birthday so i would have still been working there <laughs> yeah we wouldn't be recording this podcast yeah, no. so you guys are all welcome for You're brooke's welcome. brave and heroic move okay but how did you end up like i can only imagine also especially knowing you because i you don't like dealing with this stuff um like moving kind of moving past the hate and also like making the right decision for yourself Mm -hmm. and not caring what people had to say because this is like a life theme it's not just like in this specific setting you know definitely yeah I mean I always try to focus on the positive because for every we always say you know for every hundred nice comments there's going to be one mad one and for for some reason everybody does it everyone harps on the mean one it could be the mean one that keeps you up all night and you could be like oh my gosh thinking about it and stuff like that um I just try it's it's hard i sit here and say like i try not let it affect me and it does i don't know how any human could see things about themselves online especially sometimes they're shockingly accurate and you're like <laughs> wow like this <they're laughs> like low blows but it's like wow this is true but that's the cost of putting your life online you know and that's why every, i try to remind myself I'm like you are so privileged to have an audience that actually cares about you and knows these significant people in your life i'll show you like one comment that someone gave me that i had to delete because it, it included <laughs> such shockingly explicit details in my life that like <laughs> shockingly only, only my close close friends would know though yeah. but then i try to look at it from the stance of like wow these people are so genuinely invested that mm-hmm. they spend so much of their time like i try to channel that more into gratitude which is incredibly difficult and i'm really learning to focus on that um but i just feel like the people who are there for the my content for the right reasons will stick around and like of course i've lost some but i've also gained some and i think then it's the balance i tried to you know show a little more of like what my work is like now it's not really working people aren't really into it so it's fine we pivot the content another way and i feel like that's mm-hmm. the cool thing about our job is that you can pivot in multiple different directions and like you know sometimes the audience stays sometimes they don't but yeah. you figure it out <laughs> i think just in tr- like transitioning in life mm-hmm. especially career is so important i look at people the common denominator between everyone that I look up to career-wise and they all do such different things is the fact that they've been able to transition in so many different ways yeah. and that's the key because it's like yeah I'm not betting on Instagram to pay my bills for the rest of my totally. life but like there I will just keep transitioning and keep transitioning and that's what's going to end up happening okay there is also something that you I listened to your podcast with Gretchen shout out Gretchen oh, yeah, yeah. um and oh, you were both talking about the con like the whole concept kind of of toning yourself down which Lauren and I actually talked about yeah. on mood last week too mm-hmm. but I think we are both girls with like all of us speaking for all of us are like a lot of our friends I would like to say that we're very fun and cool but <laughs> some people don't think that no I, know. I think we just have louder personalities mm-hmm. and so people have constantly it's like a toning yourself down thing people tell us to tone ourselves down the time that has really most like messed with my confidence was last semester and i just felt like i had to make myself smaller and put myself in this box and not 
I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'm that loud, they're going to think this of me or whatever. And I would say, like, we're both actually extremely down to earth. And, like, n- freaking 100%. all of us are freaking normal people. But, like, a lot of the time, like, my humor can come off as, like, I'm stuck up or whatever. And it's like, I really am not. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, even now, I I'm like, that. I would think we're funny and cool. Like, I'm not serious. I mean, I think that we're great. But, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Self-confidence. Yeah. I get it, though. Yeah. I mean... For me personally, like, my mom was always super loud and outgoing, so I always saw it from that, and I was like, oh, like, I'm loud and outgoing, too, and then I saw, like, as I got older in life and stuff, just how, not, I don't want to say that it negatively affected me, but especially I find with men that lack confidence, it really affects them um, <laughs> strongly, because I've never... You tell them, Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really... It, I, I guess, like, women to women, like, I've never had another woman be like, oh, unless, with the exception, I guess, of, like, the haters online or whatever. Yeah, you we know, have a few of them. Yeah, yeah. They're, like, less impacted, but I feel like with guys, it's actually more of a thing because then you, like, threaten with their masculinity if you have to be, like, loud and crazy. And I have learned to realize that that's not every guy. That's some people, and they're just not your person if you have to alter your personality around them. Like, mm-hmm. that's just not – that's not it. <laughs> yeah. Does this make sense? No, that completely makes sense. I think my problem with – majority of guys i've ever seen majorly with the exception of like who i'm dating now yeah. like big time um has been the i think honestly even more than personality though it's kind of like like we're all we're so young to be like this like kind of far ahead career wise oh, that too whole and, separate con- oh yes. gosh that yes. that really is what gets those guys the insecure guys like they really don't like it it's they, so wild oh it's so wild and i've had guys like come to me after and apologize and be like i well one guy uh, <laughs> the the apology but he was like i was so threatened and it's like yes. i'm like dude i literally make video i film myself i film myself i edit majority of those videos and i post them to the internet like it's Definitely. not like i'm like freaking selena goma you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. i'm like it's just i'm literally what like i'm the weird one like it's you know what i mean yeah, but people I are so i don't know i think just the concept of like strong girls can be a big turn off to people yeah which is unfortunate but honestly you're right those just aren't the right people and now who i'm dating i mean i don't like i think that's probably why my like quentin is dating me now you know what i mean definitely it's like very switch no it's you should never have to and if you feel like oh i have to be like quieter or like i can't talk about my work stuff in front of my significant other like I, I don't know. I felt myself in those positions recently, and I was like, this is so dumb, or I would, you know, say, like, be so excited, oh, my gosh, like, I got my biggest, like, brand deal ever or something, and be want to share this with, like, the people who I thought were so significant in my life, and it's, I don't know. You you, you get a feeling when yeah. they aren't, it's not not supportive, but it's almost out of envy, but it's like, you don't even, you're not, you don't even work in the same field that I do, dude. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's totally it's a different weird space. And, like, yes, we worked really 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 hard but we kind of actually we both did actually accidentally stumble upon this Mm -hmm. at the very beginning and we've worked hard since but even like from working hard since we didn't always know what it would end up becoming you know what i mean and like we are the exception like it happened so young you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like this is not normal no one needs to be that's the other thing too i like i don't i don't know i do feel bad about genuinely because i am the person like i wake up really early i go work out really early like i whatever do all like the whole i don't know okay well there's two things the whole feeling like you have to be doing everything Mm -hmm. and it's like yeah but i also go to bed at 8 p.m so people don't realize that and then uh, and comparing yourself to people your age on social media because we all do it and there's newsflash there's always going to be someone who's doing more than you so like it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. and then the comparison just like i think the comparison like 16 year olds are making millions of dollars online now oh yeah and so you feel like at 20 you've done nothing when it's like dude you're literally 20 years old even at like 25 you know what i mean like exactly so many people don't even so many people don't even actually go into their career until they're like 30 so which is normal actually yeah. in europe it's like pushback like people still live at home until they're you yeah know, in their mid-20s like even 30 like they don't move out of the house for a while like the this is a new thing for us that we're like you have to move out of the house and be successful and like mm-hmm. do all this stuff and grind grind it's like it's okay like we can yeah. take a step back <laughs> like deep breath <laughs> chill yeah. relax you know i think people just, just compare in their heads but it's like we're not out here comparing ourselves to you like i'm not out i would never yeah. intentionally be like well i'm so much more successful than you so i can't be your friend yeah. i would i would never in a million years i don't even think that like those thoughts and don't go through my brain so also the way that i like view success is so i mean so True. much different than how i used to so like quote unquote success to me is not what 
it seems like I'm doing on my Instagram or mm-hmm. anything. And so I think, yeah, if you're doing well career wise, like that's so awesome. But if every other area of your life sucks and like you feel so like you don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like I just think for me personally, success doesn't really always have to just do with my career. Like I do feel that in my career and I'm proud of myself right now. Yeah. But I don't like the way that I view success is not by that. So I wouldn't even be like, oh, I'm success. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. There's no like it's monitor relative of the success. Yeah. yeah. It's not like, oh, I have this amount of money in my savings account. Now I'm successful. Like that is not true. Exactly. Yeah. And if you go on these websites online, it's <laughs> oh, I mean, no. We, Spoiler alert. Yeah, hit we've, we've hit, hit it. it. We've hit it. Um, we just filmed a video <laughs> for the I Love You So Much podcast Instagram of uh, it'll probably be up by now but <laughs> of us reacting to like articles online about us that are just so false it said that my net worth is 60 million dollars um literally couldn't be further from the truth yeah. but brooks is 69 million dollars yeah, yeah really fallen so, so that doesn't show that the internet is false but i don't know it does you know yeah it, yeah. it really is yeah Things um, also get over exaggerated online. Oh, very over exaggerated. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there maybe next episode. Okay, a lot of people wanted to talk, wanted me to talk to you, kind of about change in the move. A okay. lot of these topics I feel like you share so much of already. Yeah, and that's okay, and actually, knowing you personally, I feel like uh, you actually <laughs> share everything that you have to, on the majority <laughs> of it. But just kind of more so on the topic of feeling isolated and missing friends. Oh yeah especially living alone like yeah. that's so much harder when i lived alone and i loved living alone and i'm about to be living alone again and i actually thrived that way <laughs> but it's really easy especially for you and that's me at the time like in a new city and you just moved away from all of your friends in college and stuff like what do you do when you're feeling that or how have you like kind of learned to deal with it? Yeah. Um, w- well, also, I will say that transition also hit harder when I was like working my regular job. Like that was my, it was my favorite thing living alone because I had st- I went out, I socialized for the day. And, you know, it's like that thing, like my social meter meters out. Like I need to just go home and like, oh. you know, sit on the couch. Brooke and like, do is nothing. She's big on her me time. Big. She's big. She won't sit on a plane next to any of us at no, all. She will no. like actually move her seat on a plane. <laughs> so she has her own personal time. I get it. I understand it. But yeah, she loves her me time. I respect it. I just don't like to chat on planes. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. That's just. I like don't feel like anyone thing. really does now that I think about it, though. Danielle does. <laughs> so calling her out. Putting our boss. When Quinton and I fly together, we don't. I literally just like sleep on him. Oh, like, I don't okay, talk. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel like couples, it would be weird if you're like, you're going to sit in the yeah, front. Like, I like the want him to sit there so I can like sleep yeah, in the rain. Yeah. You know? No, that's why people like sitting next to friends on planes. It's like you're guaranteed you know who's sitting next to you, not like, yeah. God forbid, like someone who smells bad or something, and then you're next to them for five hours. Yeah. Like, source. Yeah. Um, so where were we going? Oh, living alone. Yeah. Yeah. So when, back when I worked like my regular job, it was great because I was like, oh, I can come home and do my thing. But now that I work for myself, I, yeah, I definitely do feel that sense of loneliness because I feel like I wake up and if I'm like filming a video or something, you know, it's all me. So there are days that go by that I don't leave my apartment, quite frankly. So I've been trying to be better about reaching out to people. But th- they might not be like my bestest friends on earth. and That's cool. But we could still get dinner. We could still, you know, watch The Bachelor together. We could still make plans. Um, and I try to really pack up my weekends because I feel like during the week people are busy or whatever. Also, I don't know. I mean, these aren't like super tangible tips, I guess. But like you do have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Otherwise, you will just sit in isolation alone and like there's nothing you could – there's no advice I could give you unless you're willing to make a change. Yeah. Do you think that – this is why you like soul cycle now because it's kind of human interaction when you're you know what i mean <laughs> i guess i mean they're like i'll chat with some people if i like meet a subscriber well you don't have to talk to them but yeah, you're just but you around people i like that i also feel more motivated in workout class so that, yeah. yeah yeah same yeah i feel like you're good about that yeah <laughs> i literally go every single day i really started to love group workout classes though when uh-huh. i lived alone because i didn't have to necessarily talk to anyone but i would start off my day or at any time of the day being around people totally. when the rest of the day i was just by myself you know yeah. it could definitely get really uh, lonely and isolating like you know, and then everybody comments and suggests like you know you should live with a roommate like just because you can financially li- afford to live alone doesn't mean that you necessarily like it fits your lifestyle or whatever so like maybe the next place i live i will get a roommate i don't really it's not completely off the table for me yeah um that was always my thing like moving to boston though because i was like oh i have my own creative space like i can finally do my and it is nice yeah. as a youtuber podcaster or whatever i could be as loud as i want of course within reason like i have neighbors and stuff but you know what i mean um, so it is nice and I do love having my own space and being able to decorate how I want and put whatever the heck I want in the fridge the way that I have it in the fridge and like 
it's nice it's a luxury it is the, the yeah. fridge especially yeah. i keep going i never go on pinterest and i'm like fridge organization pantry organization i need to go to the container yep. store immediately like i have so many things okay so talking about apartments and stuff for people who are moving what is your opinion would you rather have like live in the best location with a really small apartment that you don't love or have the best apartment ever in a bad location okay I would say that I probably have the second one and I kind of wish I had the first now although I still love my apartment like love my space but I was like oh I can get more for my money here and I totally can like if I was paying what I would in the middle of Boston like it would be a shoebox but at the same time I could probably walk downstairs and go get coffee versus having to take public transportation or walk pretty far or get in my car Mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I think it's I would say location is the best, but I guess that's this compromise you're willing to make for your space. If you're literally like going out and working all day and just coming back to your apartment to sleep basically, then like who cares? You know what I yeah. mean? I know people who live in like small apartments and they don't care because they're like, you know, down the street from their favorite restaurant and stuff like that. So yeah. I think that's going to be my vibe next place, but stay tuned. <laughs> she gave me a little wink for those podcast I don't even know listeners. Where I'm moving, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like you don't even, you literally don't even have a solid decision. Um okay, well, I actually agree with that. You do. So, I love where I live. It's actually a really really great location okay. for anyone. Um I can walk to anything that I would ever want to walk yeah. to and I love my freaking house. It's like I love where I live. Uh-huh. But for me, everything that I I got that house and then about hmm, a few months later turns out that every single thing that i did like where i work out my podcast studio another office uh the school i went to everything was was at the time in a two mile radius of each other and i had to drive 30 minutes to get there really it's like 20 i lately i've been working out at like 6 a.m there and it's a 12 minute drive so it just depends on the time of day i was just everything in la but i was talking about that and i'm like honestly it feel i wish that i just had an apartment in west hollywood because it would take it would save me so much time mm-hmm. even though like i actually love where i live like if i had things out there i would have stayed there like forever and as long as i'm in la but i actually do agree i think the location matters more than the actual oh, yeah. place and it just saves you a lot of time you know it, it, that's, that's the, the biggest thing, thing too it's like oh i'm going to a workout class gotta factor in another 15 minutes there and 15 minutes mm-hmm. back that's 30 minutes of your day it's honestly yeah. a big chunk just for a 45 minute workout gotta factor in that time still the prep time to like you know get ready get, stuff. yeah that's why i work out so early because i just get Smart. out of the way i'm done i did two workouts this morning and i was done by 8 a.m i was home at 8 20 like it's so nice but so i'm nice. not i'm really not this crazy like i wake up at 5 a.m every morning person or whatever like yeah. at all but now that i've started because i had to with the 6 a.m workout it's actually changed my life so i think i might actually <laughs> convert but i will be in bed at 8 p.m every night so i need no one i need to like turn off my phone and block every single contact for <laughs> past 8 p.m Move. okay so i wanted to talk to you about dating i know okay. surprise surprise um Ugh, shocking okay so i've never actually just like gone on a date with someone okay like we've established i only date my friends yeah um to be clear i only date one person at this point not like multiple but in the past <laughs> the people that i have dated there's only a few have mostly been grown from friendships actually every single person i've ever dated we were friends first which is good and bad um but i've never just like gone on a dating app and like or like just met someone out and about and gone on a first date or anything i loved your hinge get ready with me because it gave me a lot of like kind of insight to that world because i'm really interested because i would be so terrified so i think you guys are all my heroes because it really does take a lot of like courage to just go meet with someone and talk to them for two hours and like maybe you hate them i don't know the very beginning that's like a really tough thing so can you take me on like a (laughs) step-by-step of brooke michio's dating life like you match with them you from there like how long do you talk what's the process how long until you go on a date like just take me through it okay Okay. i've only ever gone on like so i did the hinge date get ready with me i've only ever gone on one date he i mean he asked me if i want to go on a second oh what'd you say spoiler (laughs) updates to come guys we'll see i did i did say yes but it's like planned i mean here i am in la so like yeah (laughs) hey you want to fly out to la (laughs) um so yeah with hinge i think the the biggest tip that i have for people and just what i've heard from even guys too is like it has to be like a relatively quick turnaround like if you drag out the conversation and you're good morning good night like you know just talking like good morning like over weeks you're never gonna actually meet up and i feel like most people you can't really get a sense of someone over like text Uh, at least for me i can't yeah and so hinge basically like you're messaging on the app so like yeah it's fine to chat about what you have in common so like when i matched with this guy like we chatted about you know a few things we had in common like oh you're from xyz place it's close to like where i grew up 
you know, things in common. And then he was like, hey, do you want to, like, get a drink um, sometime next week? And I was like, perfect. We set a date, and then, like, we met. And I think you have to see each other face-to-face, like, pretty quickly. I think what you said about going to get a drink is a lot b- – and that being better than dinner. Yeah. That is a lot more – that's a lot less stressful. And you it can is. just kind of come and go. Like, there's not a set – like, yep. you don't have to wait for dessert. You know what I mean? Oh, You're just kind of no. in and also, out. Yeah, what if you don't end up liking the person? And then, I don't know. I feel like dinner is, like, a huge commitment. Like, drinks is more like – It's a very big commitment. Yeah. And then, I don't know, dinner, it's, like, kind of, like it, – it could be pricey. Who pays? Like, it, it kind of gets a little weird, I would say, uh, versus the drink thing is just, like, way more casual. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be. I hate that it's like even it has to be like, oh, a drink thing, but I don't know. It's just way more low key. It's more low key, and it's not like you're like going like crazy wild by no, any means. Which, like, if you drinks. are, go for it. But yeah. like, it's just so, it's just a better setting. So I think. Pe- so many people ask me, like, they commented, they're like, how do you like end it? And I was like, I literally called an Uber and said, my Uber's here. Like, like there's, there's no, no I never, never felt pressure, pressure like that you have to continue the hangout or like go back like, but were you just like mid conversation hey my uber's here well I mean it started to get later like we were there for like two and a half hours or something so I was like yeah it was really good um so it just was at that point where I was like don't you have work tomorrow like yeah <laughs> again, I said something like oh I have like an early morning like workout class which wasn't that early but you know it's just a good way to end it yeah I was like oh I should probably you know what are we gonna do sit here all night like, yeah no, we have to go home um I, I know I've never felt pressure on a date to like have to go home with them I think you just have to be strong and be like no I'm calling my Uber like no I'm going home yeah how what happens if you don't like them like do you personally ghost people be honest or do you just like say I'm not feeling this or do you just like what do you do I feel like in a I feel like no I I feel like you could easily just ghost and that's fine on a dating app because you don't have to respond right yeah oh well if you're just messaging with them or if you met because I feel like if you met it gets a little weird yeah it's like you owe them that's really ghosting at that point yeah but how hard is it though like if you go (laughs) it's a hypothetical situation (laughs) if you go on a date with someone you don't want to go on another one with them what, how do you like do you say like hey dude like sorry just wanted to let you be honest with you like i'm not really feeling it like i i'm oh my god that's why ghosting almost is easier yeah. because it's like you don't want to be so cruel to someone like what if they're mean to you back like, we're actually yeah. the generation of ghosting i saw i know it's just easier sometimes and it's not uh-huh. even out of cruelty but it's just like sometimes it's like i don't even like feel like we're messaging this person back yeah. or i've uh, you could do the thing where you just keep making excuses like you know i'm traveling or like, you really should just say i'm not feeling it just be like hey dude like i only i really honestly don't see this going anywhere i don't want to waste your time yeah i know that's like the polite thing to do it's easier said than done though oh yeah no i'd be terrified it's really easy for me to say as i'm like seriously dating someone i'm like oh i got it i got this i can do it give me your phone brooke um okay also not even just in dating but how do you describe what you do to people because i would rather jump off a building and say that i'm an influencer oh it's but it's yeah like what do you say i actually thought of a good thing to say earlier do you want to hear it just for an idea i would love to hear it i think that saying that you're the host of a podcast which is true does sound a little bit better I like that mm-hmm. okay right? i like that so uh, yeah because this guy like i wrote on my hinge profile that i do social media so he he was talking about his job and then obviously you know it's my turn to talk about my job so. <laughs> but i never bring it up first i never because i never want to seem like like we said like too much or whatever but i guess i should bring it up first so i he was like oh what do you do and i was like i do social media like i have a podcast and a youtube channel and I really just said like I do all I, I never use the word influencer I say like I ha- I do Same. social media and then I and then as the conversation goes along you know then they ask how many followers do you have like oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate that question the worst too. question because what are I you supposed it. to say and then you say the number and they're like shut up you're famous and then you're like no the whole you're famous thing i'm like you don't like it's oh my it's just the, the opposite of true literally the opposite of true unless you look at that article that said that we're worth 60 plus yeah. million dollars oh, uh, i hope that that's the only material that they're reading before I go oh my gosh what if people google your name from hinge and that comes up and they think you're worth 69 million dollars i don't know i mean there's wow. other articles that i would hope that that article comes up more than other ones <laughs> there was another article today um that connor from dear media said i'm telling them this yeah, yeah, yeah. and it said that i made 800 it said that i made eight dollars or something today so 
there's a little bit she of a discrepancy between rich. the two posts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it used a Wikipedia as a source, which I would kindly like to point out that neither of us have Wikipedia yeah, pages. We're just not on Wikipedia, so, so no. yeah. Let us know. I say normally I'll be like, yeah, I have a YouTube channel or like I have a podcast or something. I'll never say influencer. And honestly, no, I, don't like that word. I don't like the word. And when we started off, like maybe this is dating us or cross grandmas, <laughs> the word influencer wasn't around. That's it a wasn't. relatively new concept about two or three years ago. Yeah. You know, that, that's what my mom says when she describes what I do. Cause like, that's even like, does your mom ever say like, wh- what do I use to describe you? Like, I don't think that she of... would even know the word influencer, honestly, okay. but she would definitely be like, Oh my gosh, she has a YouTube channel. And like, you yeah. know what I mean? My mom used to say like YouTuber. And then yeah. I was like, don't say YouTuber. And then she's like, what do you want me to say? I was like, I don't know. Like, just don't be weird about it. Yeah. Like <laughs> figure it out, but don't be weird about it. Please stop embarrassing me. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a hard thing because it is like, it's not, it's not something that we're not proud of. It's just like, honestly guys friend to friend listener to me Um, (laughs) whatever my name is like would you want to describe like just say that you're an influencer like not really no you know no no. it's just like i don't know what it is there's just a really i don't know we've been looped into something that we didn't really sign up for necessarily the influencer actual term directly is what i mean by that yeah i love to joke around with it though and be like like if i buy something that you suggest i'll be like uh like i was influenced like it's like a funny (laughs) joke yeah Yeah. humor (laughs) yeah i'm a content creator digital creator i feel like i don't have like the the content creator i could see that for someone i think of like my friend jeremy from he has this account called brunch boys i don't know if you yeah yeah, yeah, i saw that he, he produces, produces content. That's what I was going to say. Someone who makes videos like people that we know that are really good. Yes. That are past friends of ours. You know, like yes. that sort of thing. Like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like there is actually, and not that we aren't producing content, but the, 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 these are more curated content. Yeah. Like his content is High produ- highly I, produced. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to show you some of it later. Like it's produced videos with a theme with where he's hosting and there's different camera angles. And it's like, you would show that to a brand and be like, this is a commercial. You know what I mean? It's more content. Versus with us, it's like... What do you think about digital creator, then? I like I, like I think that. that one's better. Yeah. Uh, people always say, like, digital entrepreneur. Like, I guess oh, well, that I'll do works. that one. That one works out. But, what, but I, like, I haven't started a business or anything. I mean, yeah. not... Nope. Technically, yes, we have. But actually, yeah, we have. We have. Technically. Yeah. But if someone asks me, though, what do you do? I'm not going to say I'm a digital entrepreneur. Like, those yeah. words will never come uh, No, I, I would never... <laughs> also, I would never call myself an entrepreneur. Like, in yeah. that sense... Unless I'm like, uh, I don't know. That could be like your LinkedIn bio, but like you're not going to like yeah. say it on like a, a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Unless no. you're in a certain setting and like you have kind of more so maybe earned the right. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to kind of end this episode, which has been a really great episode. Don't worry. Ooh. It's not just ending out. We have one more segment, now, guys. Oh. I wanted to s- talk about what we would say to our 16-year-old selves because okay. that is around the age that we became friends. Brooke was Brooke X Beauty at the time, oh wearing God. Lily Pulitzer, Vineyard Vines. <laughs> Everything had her monogram on it. The monogram oh, yeah. necklace. It's taking me back. Um, she also, it's so bizarre because YouTube is, for a few weeks, was really pushing your really old videos and Alicia's really old videos. Yeah, I noticed It was kind of odd. My Sweet 16 video. Oh, the Sweet 16 that? video was one of my favorites. And I remember watching it at the time, too. Yeah. And you're so, like... Put together it was genuinely a very useful video like i oh, hope people I, were having I, those ju- I remember planning this video i took like three pages of notes i was like mom what did we do for this and i was like scrolling everything down because i was like i wanted to make it like the best video ever oh yeah well it was really good honestly like even to this day i'd be like oh that's a good video like it was helpful i feel like it's still helping girls today but yeah. like just thinking back to our 16 year old yeah seriously yeah, a, a must watch i would love to know if there's anyone under the age of 16 listening to this podcast wow. please if i don't think that there would be but dm really me cool. or f- comment in the facebook group or on the instagram and tell me if you're under 16 i would actually love to know kind of doubt it um <laughs> it's like cricket cricket you know yeah what do you feel like you wasted the most time on at 16 Ooh, that's a really good question actually um i mean i would say like caring what other people think and stuff which is always like the generic answer but at the same time i always kind of like did me and i always kind of like did my own thing like everybody else did sports and whatever and i did like when i was in freshman year sophomore year i did theater and then i got like heavily into youtube and i was uh, like i talked about it like pretty openly like there was a period of time where i was bullied for it so i feel like i always kind of did me but in the back of my mind, I still, like, always did care a little bit of what other people thought. Um, I would 
don't tell my younger self like that. I know this is like so sad, but like it, it gets so much better. Yeah, same. Because I feel like sixteen year old me would look at me now and be like, oh my gosh, like she's really living. You know, oh, as so like sweet. sad as that sounds. Yeah. No, does that make sense? No, I completely agree. That's okay. I would probably say chill out. <laughs> Which yeah. I think that that will always be my answer. Even as I get older, I think I'll be at 80 and I will still be telling myself to chill out. Yeah. For the record, I have, but I think one can always chill out a little bit more. And I agree, like it just gets better, especially like growing up. I don't know. I loved growing, I loved where I grew up so much. I love my family, I love all of that, but like it's hard sometimes. Yeah. Totally. And there's just like, I mean, I had some rough things happen before like that age. So I just feel like. I don't know, like, I was actually thinking about that today, and I'm like, if you told my 16-year-old self my life now, especially just, like, literally in the last week alone, I'm like, I feel more myself than ever, especially in the past two years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Brooke has Twitter fingers, which she has recently since, um, unfortunately, quote-unquote, retired, um, and I'm looking forward to their return. I think Brooke also has the best Twitter of all time. Anyways. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no, actually, now every time I tweet something since I tweeted that I retired, I get like called out by my friends. Like Mariah will like be like, "Brooke, I thought you were gonna stop." But I'm like, oh shoot! Sometimes I just think stuff that's so good. But I had someone like tell me recently, they're like, "Why do you do it?" I was like, "I don't really know." He was like, "You should probably like give some help." <laughs> I was like, oh my god! I really don't think it's that bad. Like I don't think it's like the worst thing ever. I'm also not out here like saying explicit names. Yeah, I'm not, like, so and so the worst. <laughs> Worst human ever. Like what? Yeah. Not, it's not, whatever. Sorry, I like I how instead of yeah. subtweeting, it's Twitter fingers. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, not even all of your stuff is a direct subtweet. It's Some just, of it's, it's just really general just funny general stuff. stuff. Yeah. Like I actually think it's hilarious. But thank you. Yeah. Anyways, I think I would just tell myself to kind of relax, because I've always been like a little bit high strung and um. Okay, part of me thinks I'm really I'm really type A, and part of me thinks I'm, like, really not. I think where I lack <laughs> is the administrative side of that. I think I'm yeah. really organized and, like, a planner and really on my game, yeah, but I'm are. not administrative. Like, I hate Excel stuff. I'm literally, my oh, so my degree, ironically, is business administration. And you're like, I hate that. I hate it. Yeah, I really yeah. hate the administration part. I love the business part. I think I would just tell myself to chill out and, oh, you know what? Actually, no. This is the main thing I would tell myself. I've said this on the podcast, so I'm trying to think of a way to phrase it, but another way, but it's the whole idea of like, don't be married to your first idea. Cause yeah. I was so tunnel vision. Like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this kind of video, YouTube video, and this is what's going to happen. And this is how my career is going to go and blah, 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 blah. Saturation. Oh my God. Don't even bring it up. So bad, Brooke. Anyways. Yeah. We went through a, well, yeah, you did it too, right? I, Not yeah. as much as us. No. Danielle and I fell into it a lot more than you guys did. Yeah. But I would still do the like whole like five ways to be stress-free or something yeah. like meanwhile such, you're like so stressed out yeah i was like i've never like and it was like one of them was like sit in the grass i was like i've never <laughs> sat in the grass we deserve like, video footage of you just sitting in the grass it's like something so stupid i'll show you because i remember the like the thumbnail that i made i was like this is epic it's getting so many views i got like 2000 views i was like it made it like all records i'm literally like, crying oh my god you <laughs> i know i think though i was so tunnel and like i think that is my best quality and my my worst quality because I'm very set if I want something to happen I'm like yeah. it will happen but it's also my worst quality because sometimes one I think there's two things sometimes something else this was supposed to happen and that just means it's better even if it Definitely. wasn't like your original idea and then two sometimes things happen the thing that you want is going to happen, but it's never going to happen the way that you think it's going to happen. Ooh, I like that. So yeah. then, since you're so tunnel really vision, like you, like, miss it, right? So I yep. think I would say don't be tunnel vision and think bigger and wider. I like that. Right. In the way, in the exact way that you're thinking, like, I, oh my gosh, I like that. Because I feel like everyone sets out these goals for themselves and, like, these are the steps I'm going to take. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like, you know, the plan kind of falls apart, but you still get to the end. Yeah. It just might take you a little bit extra time. Yeah, and I think you're better off for it. Like, I everything that didn't go the way I went like the my school for example uh -huh. um the school I ended up at couldn't have been further from what I ended up come what I originally like wanted to come to LA for like part I mean most of it was school but not the kind of school that I went to best decision I've ever made even That's over awesome. career stuff yeah. so and it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done as far as like the rest of my life you know what I mean yeah. so it's just things like that you have to just be open but we're gonna end this episode oh, but don't be too sorry. worried guys because um Brooke also has a podcast which I will have yeah. her share we also filmed a few videos for um the I Love You So Much Instagram which will be in the show notes and linked below in the YouTube video um but 
those are really freaking funny like one of them is we're reading the article and then another one is like how to break up with someone in a story time kind of in like the nicest way possible um but brooke where can they find you so on YouTube and Instagram, it's just my name, Brooke Michio. Everyone's like, what the heck is this girl's last name? When we made this age of switching from like the username to the name, it was like a blessing and a curse. <laughs> because, yeah. yeah. Um, my last name is M-I-C-C-I-O. Uh, at Brooke Michio on literally everything. Twitter. I think I'll go. Oh, yeah. And then I have a podcast with Danielle Carolyn, the best ever. Best Gals ever. Go. Um, it's a lot of fun. We post um, twice a week. So oh, love go that. listen. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks Ken. for coming See on. You. This is so fun. I loved it.